Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. Well, it's um, New Year's Eve today, and I'm going out in a few hours, but uh, I thought I'd have um, have an hour or two um, playing with the um, Project Mildred's Ashtray again, since I've got a few spare hours. I've had some really good comments from people um, suggesting um, probable um, issues and probable um, faults, uh, so shout out to um, Gadget UK and um, Duncan Gunn, who have both been basically saying very similar things about with that um, read write pin. Um, hi, it's basically. I think he. Um, I can't remember what he said. Whether he said. I think he said it's um, looking for a write, and that's why it's um, hi. And it's obvious. Sorry, it's looking for a read. Or yeah, I think it's looking for a read. And it's um, that's why it's always high when it's switched on. And obviously, that means that it's not getting very far in the startup um, routine and he said check around or check whether um, the um, MOS ROM was actually um, working which it is I've tried that in my um, other BBC and check around the socket now it, these are the original single wiper um, IC sockets here but I mean compared to my other beam that my working beam these sockets actually feel really quite tight um, but we do know that this computer's had a bit of a checkered pass we don't know how well it's stored and have we got I mean I've tried cleaning these I've had a bit of um, contact cleaner in them tried um, shoving a, a chip in and out a few times but have we just got some real severe corrosion around that IC socket um, and as I've got plenty of replacements I think it might be just as well just to rule it out just to swap that socket out and at the same time, <coughs> excuse me, these uh, IC71, um, IC72, um, which yeah, um, I think Duncan was saying I had to check these before. Yes, I have because this is where I, had, I made my little um, faux pas on the board when I was trying to remove that IC, and I've been struggling so much with um, the solder at the time. I thought I'll do this smart thing, you know, I'll um, cut the legs, take it out, and then unsolder each individual pin. And I said I wasn't paying attention, I slipped with the knife, and I went through a few traces on the board. Now I did repair that under the IC, but I'm tempted. Now I've got the desoldering station, I'm not worried about lifting things, um, lifting things again so much as I was before. Even, like I said, this board is still horrible, but that um, desoldering station seems to be tackling it quite well. I'm going to actually take the all these sockets that I put on back off, clean that bit of the board up really, really well, um, redo my work where I broke them traces. I might actually do it on the back. I, I literally I got a little bit of, of uh, wire out of an old um, coil and just bridged it across where the brakes were. I don't know whether that was the best thing to do. It is visible on this side of the board. Um, kind of tempted to um, get rid of all that, it's, there's only three brakes um, trace them out and just do point to point on the back of the um, on the back of the board to repair that rather than the bit of a bodger did there and see if we can just tidy it up a little bit so uh, basically that's what I think I'm going to um, have a crack on with um, today, I don't know if I'm going to film all of it, like I said I haven't got that much time to work on this but um, I thought I'd have a bit, little bit of a play I think first thing I'm going to do is take off um, this. So well, we'll get all these sockets off, and we can take a look at the board, and you can see the horrendous damage that I did um, under the board there. There's no time like the present, I don't suppose. So we're dealing with there, there, and um, obviously I'll get you. Let me just get you down a little bit so you can see a bit more. There we go. Um, obviously them at least we're not going to have to deal with bent over pins because they're the two IC sockets that I uh, put in uh, that one that's one of the ones that I was saying about in the previous video where they've literally they've bent both sides of the uh, pins right over but um, I'm hopeful that this desoldering station should um, should tackle it okay anyway right we might as well um, we might as well get on with it get the old uh, Start with the ones that I um, put 
for sake because um, these are the easiest to get off. That's the only problem I'm having with this uh, new desolder gun at the moment. I'm hitting the uh, trigger a little bit too early. I'm not letting the solder melt. I'm not used to um, a desolder station that's got a trigger a, a trigger like that. My old one, like I said, it uh, had a foot pedal. So you had to make a real definite action to um, start the pump going on it as well. This it's that easy. that side look fairly clear there actually. So this is new solder that we're well that's the first I had to make these sockets that's the other thing I had to make these sockets up out of um, a socket and then a half a socket because I didn't have any I've now actually got some correct sockets the right size so we will be putting um, better sockets on here anyway than uh, what I had on previously. and see how, uh, how free that is. So the first part of the socket I've seen already has just literally dropped off so let's have a look. Yeah as you can see that's just dropped off. Just pull that off the board there. And that one again that's just come straight off. It really is rather good that uh, desoldering station. Right, let's get this next. This is the socket that um, has got the damage underneath it. So let's get this one off. Struggling a bit here holding the um that's the only other thing is because the gun's in a different position to what I'm used to. I find it is giving me a little bit of shoulder ache. Um I'd really be better with the board in the stand so I won't do it flat down here on the desk but what we have to do over. Go back over that one because that one didn't seem to suck very well. Right, let's. Uh, we might have to have a look at that one pin. Um, one pin there. I won't. Oh well. <laughs> well, that bottom bit seems to have pretty much dropped off. Uh, well, perhaps we weren't. No. Perhaps I didn't need to be concerned. Yeah, that bit's fallen straight out. And uh, we pull this bit off here now. 
There we go. Oops, oh dear. Oh, we're lifting a, um, lifting a trace there. Uh, I think that's one that got damaged. Are we? Oh, no, we're not. No, it's my stupid eyesight. No, we're not. I thought we was lifting a... Oh, no, we Is that trace moving? No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm being over-cautious. No, I'm not lifting the trace. No, no, I'm not lifting the trace. Anyway, that come off okay. I'll zoom you in and show you my um, the way I uh, repaired it. Like I said, I'm probably going to redo this and actually do it under the board. Let's get you in. I mean, you can see, see there. Basically, when uh, I slipped with the knife, I went through a trace there, a trace there, and a trace there. And I literally took a little, a very fine piece of wire, soldered it on there, brought it round, and then soldered it back onto the trace there. Same with that one. And same with that one. And I did test these for continuity, and I've got continuity through them. But I just don't like... I, I think I might be better off, like I said, redoing that. Taking them off, cleaning it all up and then um, just doing it with um, some very fine, I've got some um, wire wrap wire kicking about somewhere, some brown wire wrap wire and just doing it which is nice and thin solid core wire with a very thin insulation on it um, just doing it on the back of the board there instead just point to point um, I think first thing I'm going to do is um, try and get that socket off there and we can look at perhaps replacing that and then obviously we'll do a bit of clean up on the, um, clean up on the board I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh um, fresh solder. Can you see where I'm working there? No, we can't. Let's get the camera down onto where we're working. I think I'm just going to add a little bit of um, fresh solder to these points before I try and um, get them off. So they're, in, they're a bit of a pain when they're like that, when they're um, both sides are bent over like that. Can use the um, actual desolder gun to um, add the solder. All we need to do is just touch the pin, and just add that little bit of extra fresh, fresh leaded solder to each pin. Added a little bit of extra fresh, um, fresh solder to them. We'll do the same on this side. Just clean the end of my, uh, clean the end of my solder gun off. There we go. That's better. Solder, that doesn't matter a jot because I'm going to be sucking all this off in a minute. Just want to try and get the uh, try and get the socket off. Right, there we go. Some fresh solder added to them. Let's have a go at seeing if we can get uh, these pins out now. <laughs> trying to do at the moment is basically just use the iron to remove a good chunk of the 
solder then we can have an attempt to try and just straighten these pins up a little bit then we can have another go at sucking out the remainder of the uh, solder but adding that little bit of fresh will just um, help help the old stuff flow Of course, the other way of doing it is actually just to break the so break the socket up on the other side of the board, and uh, then just get each pin out individually. I mean, if I didn't have this um, desoldered on this new desoldering station, and um, I absolutely had to remove this socket, that's probably the approach I'd take. Let's try getting these out on this side. These aren't quite as bent over, unfortunately. They are still bent over, but they're not as bent over as the ones on that side. They were really bent over. That's hurting. <laughs> mm. Right, there we go. That side seems to have come um, quite away quite nicely. This side, not so much, but like I said, we've got rid of a lot of the solder off them pins. Try that one again. So hopefully we can straighten them. It shouldn't be too bad to get that. Uh, where have I got some flat? Why do the tools you always need suddenly disappear when you need them? Ah, there ah they're not ideal, but they will do for what we want. have to get hold of a fewer just a couple at a time and basically just want to see if we can just straighten up these pins they are straightening quite nicely them actually most of them are most of them are actually free yeah just have to be gentle doing it but um and we will do this side as well, because these aren't anywhere near as bent over. Right, we'll flip it over and we'll just see how, um, how well attached that socket still is. We probably will have to just go over it again with the desoldering pump and just put, get a little bit more out. But at least we've got all the um, pins up up right now. In fact, before we even try and um, suck it out again, let's just go over it one more time. Especially on this side. But like I say, we can now... hand on my other hand to be able to uh, steady it so I can get it on the actual pin. I do have a particularly bad shoulder so um, I have to hold hold things for too long it does get a does get an issue. Let's give 
this side one more uh, most of these feel really free Let's give that a quicker whittle from the other side and see how close we are for it to come off. Right, where's the uh, where's my chip extractor? That's probably the best thing to try and just get underneath it with. Well, where's the bloody thing? I've just used it. I really want to try leaving it up with a screwdriver. That's the only, um, that's the only, uh, I might be able to get it with the end of my knife. That's still, it's loose but there's still a pin, a pin hold in it. I'll just turn it back over. And we just want to give each pin a little whittle, um, just to make sure it's absolutely certain that it's it's free. Let's try with this. So literally, you just want to go across every pin and just make sh just give it a flick at each way, just to make sure it's not stuck in stuck anyway. Well, these seem okay. They seem nice and free. Oh, that one was a little bit stuck. That one's alright. That one's free. That one's free. That one's free. That was a little bit stuck. So was that one. That one's free. That was a little bit stuck. That one was, that's free, that's free, that's free, that's free, free, free. That one might need uh, just a quick um, suck over again. That one might need a quick suck, them two might need a quick suck over again. That's free. That one could do a little. I'm just going to go down that area there again. There's a couple there that just feel a little bit uh, tight. Oops. Give that another try on the other side. Can you see where we are there with that? Yeah, you can still see that we're still in shot. Right, so let's give it a quick. There we go. That feels better. Feels a little bit tight on that side. Just give it a really gentle. That's lifting there. There's one pin there that might be um, a little bit on the tight side, but I think we can sneak that up. That up there. Yeah, there's a, it look like there might be a couple, a couple of pins on that side. That one. That one there. I think that one there might still be a little bit tight. It's one of the ones up there. Now we thought that was free. It felt free, but. That, is it that one? Is it 
does feel it feels all right that it moves both sides but um there's definitely something on that and that one feels tight there's definitely something on that end there that's still um, holding it the rest of the but the rest of the um I see it's pretty much dropped off that side there, they're all out. They're all loose. It's just something around this top end there that's causing the problem. So we'll just take a quick suck just on that top bit there. So they did feel free, but um holding on there Even a little side to side uh, work as well yeah, they're perfectly free it's, it's that one there that pin there that's causing us problems. I think what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of solder and just re um try and re um re suck it out. In fact we'll do the one next to it as well. The others feel perfectly free. Let's give that another try now. See that the chip literally I did that one there and it just dropped off the board. So hopefully we haven't done any damage there. Let's um, spin it back over and have a look. Let's get hold of that with the uh... there we go. Looks like it's very slightly lifted though. Let's just have a well, maybe not. It don't feel it don't feel lifted when I. Uh, no, no, maybe not. It's just um, a little bit of solder mask missing there, and the tinnings come over um, ever so slightly. But no, that seems to have come off okay. We'll suck it. But probably our best that we um, do replace that. But at least with that off, it gives us a really good opportunity to um, do some proper continuity checks um, round here. So I'll just pause the video for a minute because I've um, just realised I've not got my um, continuity tester, the one that's got a buzzer on it anyway, which will make doing this video a little bit easy, easier. I haven't actually got it here, so um, just pause the video a second, I'll be right back when I've got that set up. So uh, back in a sec. Right, we're back and I've got my, um, I've got my um, tester, I've got my continuity tester, which... Um, it's got a buzzer on it as well, so it makes life a little, little bit easier. I don't have to keep looking up at the meter. It's a bit quiet, but it um, it does the job. And I particularly like this one because it only uses about one and a half volts to um, on the continuity range, uh, which is good when you're obviously working with five volt um, logic. But uh, as you can hear, it does um, it does function, but we won't do, use that just yet. I thought what we'd do first is um, I'm going to clear off the um, actual repairs that I've done because I'm not 100% happy with them. I think I can do a better job at um, making good my uh, my damage there. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got some um, desolder braid here and some um, liquid flux. I really, really don't like this flux actually. I'm not going to get it again. It's one of these liquid, uh, no clean fluxes. And it was a little bit cheaper than the normal uh, rosin based flux that I normally uh, buy the normal liquid um, flux. And I thought I'd just give it a go and it, yeah it works but um, I'd rather use proper flux and clean off the residue to be honest. Uh, but we can use it for now. I'm just going to put a little bit on where we're, um, where we're working. And I'm also going to um, 
just get a little bit on the brush. I'm going to um, put a little bit on the um, solder braid as well. I mean, it's meant to have a flux in this, but it doesn't. It doesn't hurt, do any harm just to um, add a little bit of your own. Like that. That'll do. Right. Okay. I'm going to use my old. Um, as Andy likes to call it, my poker. Purely because it's got a nice, quite wide, flat bit on it, and it's about 25 watt iron, I think. Um, so yeah, I think it's around about the 25 watt mark. Um, it's just about right for this. So we'll go in and we'll just um, wick away what I've done previously. Oops, that's one bit off. Then we're going to have a good clean up. Um, so we'll get a clean up with some isoprop and a couple of Q tips. Right, there we go. I think that's all the wires that I'd. Um, all my bodge wires detached. Let's get them off the board. Yeah. There we go. There's the three, um, the three bodge wires that I put on previously. So I'm going to do it a better. I'm going to do a better job wasn't too happy with them really. Uh, I've got a little bit of solder there which I think I bridged a, um, a break with again. I think I'll probably, um, especially since it's come, it seems to be coming off a via there, um, I think I'll most possibly just run a um, wire underneath the underneath the board to repair that. Let's, uh, let's get this little bit of solder off and give it a proper look then. Because remember I did all these repairs with that um, RAM IC socket IC51 still in place. Blocked a hole there. There we go. Oh no, I'll have to get the. Uh, maybe I'll do that with the desolder pump actually. I managed to block one of the um, one of the pin holes while I was um, doing then. So let's just give it a. There we go, that's clear again. And we've got all the um, solder and the bits and bats off there, so we'll just give it a really good clean now and um, see how well it comes up. And then make a decision how we're going to actually repair it. And we will do some continuity testing while we're um, at it as well. Go around the board and we'll just have a bit of a clean up. See that I see there's alright, there was no problem with um, that one there. It was just this um, IC, um, IC72 that was the um, issue. clean up anyway. There we go. Nice and clean now. And yeah I can unfortunately I can see where the brake is there. I am really tempted just to repair that with a little bit. It's such a tiny little brake I am tempted just to possibly repair that with a little bit of solder if I can because I think once it was um, perhaps just a little bit neater than I did it last time if I can just get it to bridge over neatly um, apart from that let's uh, let's check some of these um, traces anyway which I think might be damaged well which we know are damaged and um, then we can look at perhaps repairing them in a better way so it's really, it's continuity between, uh, well we've got that one, I wonder if I can repair that. Where does it go through to? Let's trace it. It's one of these three vias over here. Oh, you can't see where I'm pointing. But it's one of these three vias over here to that via there. 
Now it is, uh, we have got a definite break I think between, yeah we have a definite break over there but I've, we've got continuity between that side there and the via that it should be. We're all right there. That's it there. No, you see, that's one of the ones that I've broke when I slipped with the knife before and damaged it there. So, even if we solder that in there, we've still got another break there. So that's really one that we should um, we should look at repairing with um, a wire underneath. Now, where is that hookup wire that I dug out earlier? Um, ba -bum -ba -bum. I've done it again. I've got all set up and I've not got one of the things I need. Um, I'm sorry folks, you just have to bear with me again. I'll go and see if I can find um, the bit of hookup wire that I thought I'll use to um, do the repairs on here. So um, again, back in a second. Well, fortunately, I managed to, uh, I managed to find it. Um, that was harder to find than I thought. God, this is a uh, vintage uh, in its well in itself. Um, 7th of September 1988. This um, this roll of um, can you see that there? Yeah. Um, yeah, there. Um, yeah, 7th of September 1988. This roll of uh, wire was made. I wonder if there are any other ones I've got. I've got dates on them. No, they don't. They don't even have the batch code on them. I've got loads of these, they came from a former employer of mine and previous to that they actually came from um, Granada Television. Um, it's what the um, studios, all the uh, rack equipment in studios, um, they basically wire the backs of them with. So I've got, I've got uh, probably about a thousand metres of the stuff, you know, um, enough to keep me going for some time, but most of it is um, multi-strand as well for doing this kind of work I prefer the single core and I, do, I must admit I've only got a couple of rolls of this uh, but anyway we'll cut a piece of this off and I'm going to strip both ends of it and I'll show you what I'm going to well at least attempt to do with it just so we can figure out what what needs to go where so just strip the uh, to prefer a bit off. And the first one we're working on, we know um, we've got a via here and we've got a first break there. So uh, I'm going to see if I can just shove the wire through that via, which I can. And I'll bend it over on the other side so it can't go anywhere. Right, so we know where our start point is there. We know where our first break is, but we know we've also definitely got a second break because we've tried carrying on so we'll go from where we know where our first break is which is there oh, let me switch the meter on so we actually can um, hear it right so we know yeah that works we know our first breaks there so we'll go from there we'll see if we've got continuity up here we do let's see if we've got continuity down here No, so I think we've got multiple breaks in that wire actually. Let's try and just spot where it originally goes. Goes there, across there. Ah, oh, yeah, and we've got another break there. So, yeah, we do have multiple breaks in that. Um, in that. We're, no, it's there. So we follow it along. Unfortunately, we go under that socket, but we know it's one of these vias round here. I'll just check the ones round and make sure we're not making a mistake, but no. It's that via there. You can't really see. You can't see because of where my hands are. Right, so basically we've definitely found where the other side of it is. So if we take the wire and we shove that down that hole there through that via should slide through the other one slid through alright don't want to force it but hopefully we can see that on the other side let's uh, flip the board over yeah it's that one there I can see it must be a bit tight but I can just see there where that via is 
So what I'm going to do, hang on, let me zoom you out a little bit. Oops. So basically we've got um, a wire there that we poke through the wire and we can see because it won't poke through but I can actually just see the end of the wire on that via there so if I take my um, my sharpie I'm just going to mark, put a little mark, a dot there tiny little dot and then a dot next to that via there we can clean these off uh, with a bit of isoprop um, later so that's our first our first thing that we need to uh, we need to repair in fact we're probably better off going literally from that via um, straight across to there because we're not we don't we're not connect let's just make sure we're not going to be connecting anything else let's follow we don't pick any pins up on the way do we because obviously we did we'd have to um, connect between that as well because there's multiple breaks we're not just linking two things out you know obviously there's um, if there was other chips in that line that we picked a pin up, there could be a break between them two points. So let's just quickly um, run through that with a just trace through that, make sure we've not got that problem. So we come from there, we go along, up, across, down. No, no, we're fine. Um, so what I think we'll do is we'll put the wires on. Shall we put the wires on as we go or shall we put the wires on after? I don't know. What would be better? Let's have a let's have a look how much the wires would hinder us soldering on um, the sockets. No, they would do quite a lot. So we'll just have to remember. Just make sure that is the right. Because I've took this wire out now and it still looks like there's something in that wire. Let's have a look. No, it is that right one. So I hold it up to the light. That's the only one there that's blocked, and that's the one that we um, we push the uh, wire into. So that's definitely the right one. All right, let's try the next one. So that's one down. We know one um, trace that we've got broken, which is from that via there. We've gone her along, and like I said, we found out there's a few breaks in it, so it's easy just to link it out in, on the back. I think we'll just check. We'll just check um, all these. I mean, they don't look broken, but I think we'll check them anyway, just to be on the uh, just to be on the safe side. So like that pin there, and that comes. And basically, I think if we just go along, we should find it somewhere around here. There it is. So that's okay. We we'll go the next one up. That seems okay. Go the next one up. That's okay. Go the next one up. That's okay. Go the next one up. Now this might be on the next chip. Let's see where that is. There it is. So that's okay. Now the next one that goes in the opposite. This is one of the ones I think that is. Um, oh no, it's not. That goes through to the other side. So that should be all right. That doesn't have a. Um, that doesn't have a trace on this side of the board. And again, the next one. That one doesn't have a trace on this side of the board. The next one just goes through a via right next to it. So we go on the via and we go on the pad. Yeah, that's okay. The next one again goes straight through the board, um, there's nothing connected to it. The end one there, I think that's probably VCC and that looks okay. Let's just check that one to the, to the next pin. Yeah, that's fine. That's either ground, it'll be VCC up there, won't it? Okay, let's go down this side of the IC. That one goes straight through the board. Now the next one... The next one goes straight through the board. The next one goes straight through the board. The next one goes straight through the board. A lot of these do. This one goes to the via next to it, and that's okay. That one goes straight through the board. That one goes straight through the board. 
that one goes straight through the board that one goes straight through the board but unfortunately the um, I seem to have lost the um, solder pad so I have to be a bit careful when we solder that one in position although the pad is good on the other side and that one is I think the um, ground plane at the end there so we're not too bad on that chip I think it's mostly it's things that are going between actually that have got damaged um, like between this IC, IC71 um, there's traces that go between the pins on um, IC72 um, and it's them that seem to have got damaged so let's have a look here um, that seemed, that's fine we've already tested that that one goes in the opposite direction so that's okay because we didn't do any damage around IC71 it's all towards IC72 like I said my um, blade slipped when I was trying to cut the chip off and I went into the um, board that's what's caused all this um, these issues I, said, I was pretty certain I actually had repaired all this and it was correct I had tested it all out it's just I wasn't entirely happy with the the way it looked and I must admit I've been watching a few more of Gadget's videos and um, showing um, really it's better to rewire it on the back of the board and I tend to um, agree with him because I mean yeah it weren't that visible because it was underneath an IC socket but you could see the bits of wire and what have you I think it would be far neater just to link it up on the um, back of the board and actually I've even got a bit of um, green paint just touching the solder mask which I um, damaged down that side when I was um, being a bit over vigorous with some desolder braid to clean it up um, when I originally did pull that um, IC off. Right, anyway, let's uh, let's carry on with the um, investigations. So, where was we up to? So we'd um, ascertained that that, actually all down this side, uh, they either go to a via and they look, there's nothing wrong with them, or uh, they just go straight through. Like I said, it's this side of the IC I think we may have some issues with. Right, that pin there, and unfortunately the, the, um, the silt screen goes right over where I'm trying to trace here, uh, which doesn't make life easy. Uh, but we've got that first one that comes down there, I think that runs to there. Let's check. Yeah, that's correct, so that's fine. The next one goes straight through, that's not a problem. The next one goes to a via, that's not a problem. Um, the next one goes straight through now so that looks like a lot of these ones that are damaged they actually go to again they go to these vias over here like the first one so we might yeah I think all the damage is going to be between these vias and those vias so I think we are going to be able to get away with just doing some nice easy um, links on the back and just make it look neat that way so let's carry on che checking anyway just to make absolutely sure. Now where was I up to? So we, yeah, so we'd ascertain that basically there's nothing on that chip affected. It's between these vias here and these vias here where the brakes are. So let's have a look at this one here. We've got a via there. We've got a bit of damage there. We can, right, so we've got continuity to there. Continuity to there continuity to there with no continuity to it over there it's gone from there so let's follow that along over under so we're to there let's try it from there to here there we go so it's that one, I wonder if I did that actually when I was um, repairing it the first time round because there is a little bit of solder actually on that via there hopefully we can still push this, uh, yeah we can, we can just push that wire through it and we'll push it to the via over here where it has to go to you can see like that I've just got it between the two vias so when I flip the board over I can see exactly where I've got to go so again, if I take um, the Sharpie, and I'll just put two dots this time, so we can clean these dots off after with um, isoprop, it's not a problem. 
just I can then identify exactly where each wire has to go. Right, so we've got two dots there, we've got two dots there, we've got one dot there, we've got one dot there, that's fine. That's the next one done. Get that wire back out of that hole. There we go. So that's that break identified. We've already done the next break down. No, we haven't. No, I have. Uh, so we've got that one. No, that next one's fine because it just goes to the. It's from that wire to that pin there, and that's okay. There's no nothing wrong there. We'll just double check it, but I can't see there being anything wrong there. No, that's fine. The next one over there we've already done. Have we done this one here yet? No. So that's okay to there. But we haven't got it over there. Oh no, let's check that one. That's okay. Now there's one. So, yeah, we, sorry, we've already done that one, haven't we? That one's broken. No, that's the yeah, that's the first one we did. That's the second one we did. Yeah, that's the second one we did. Done that one. So we've got one here. We follow that down. That's okay there. But it gets damaged slightly there. But it's still okay. It's No, it's fine. So most of these actually... So up to now we've only found, I've put three bodge wires on, I, I wonder if there was one that looked damaged but actually it wasn't, um, it wasn't really that damaged. Let's just check this one, so we go from that pin there, to there, oh, yeah that's fine, we'll go to that wire there, that's fine. So I'm wondering if I put a uh, bodge wire on where I didn't really need one, it's looking, uh, it's looking possible actually. I think I might have put a bodge wire on where uh, one wasn't strictly needed. Just check where that is. That goes up to there. That one. No, that one's that one. Ah. There's another one, sorry. And that's to there. So I have made a mistake, there was another one. So, I have got three. Thought there was three. So we'll go put that in there so we know where it is. They don't lose where the um, hole is. And then on this side, let's remember where we're going. So we'll trace it back. Trace it along there, and it's that via there. Just double check that. And always as well to double and triple check so you don't want to connect something up wrong. If you can't help it because then you end up chasing, uh, chasing your tail for um, hours and hours and hours. There we go, that's in there. So we know we're We've got another break there. Let's just do what I think. Because, um, I mean, I did spend quite some time previously checking this. And um, I'm pretty certain I could only find them three breaks. So, seeing we've got everything off here, it, it just pays just to really spend some time going over it and making sure there's nothing else that you're, um, you know, you've missed. And actually, no, I think I'm pretty confident now that um, I've got 
it was just them three that were broke. Um, there's no other damage apart from, like I said, we've got a lifted pad there, which uh, I obviously did when I. Um, oh, my antistatics come on. Disconnected. Let's make sure that's plugged back in. There we go. Um, which I obviously did when I re removed IC um, 72 originally. Anyway, let's. Uh, just mark on here. It's a pity that's going to be quite close to that one. Let's just put a. We'll put a line next to that one. Like that. And we'll put a line next to that one. Like that. So we know then. Line to line. One to one. Two dots to two dots. We know where all the wires are actually got to go. Like I said, and then we can easily clean. Um, clean them bits of marker pen. Them bits of sharpie pen. Off the uh, back of the board. When we're finished. They'll come off with a bit of isoprop then. No problem. So we can get rid of that wire now. Pull that out of the board. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to tidy up some of the um, damaged solder mask round there. I've got a, it's not the right colour, and I suppose it's probably not the right thing to use, but it's what I've got. And I think it'll do the job anyway. anyway I've just got a little bit of um, Humbrol um, enamel. And I'm going to try just using a little bit of that just to touch in where um, the solder mask damaged. Basically just down that side there. Um, and over there, I'll zoom you in so you can see. Um, oops, that's as high. That's as far as the camera will zoom in, unfortunately. But I can't get any closer to the um, desk of the way I've got it set up. But basically, there's a bit of uh, solder mask uh, missing down the side of that chip there. Um, there's a bit of solder mask missing there. What I'll do is I'll. I'll do the repair work now and then I'll um, shut the camera off and see if I can reposition it and show you a little bit better um, what we've done to repair it. Anyway, I need something I can um, mix a little bit of. Ah, that'll do. I don't know what that's off, but it'll do. I've got a little um, plastic thing I can mix some paint on. I've got a little bit of um, white spirit. See, I'm using a paint like this. And my finest, um, finest brush I could um, find, which I managed to pinch off my mother. <laughs> my mother's a painter, so um, she does have plenty of fine brushes, and she said that one's no good for uh, fine detail work anymore. So uh, I'm sure it'll do for this. All right, let's get the. Uh, get, hopefully, this paint's going to be all right. I think it's going to need mixing up. Um, need something to mix this paint with. What forgot? What forgot? I'll use a capacitor leg. Yeah, that works. Oh, will just be a second because these paints haven't been used for um, a considerable amount of time, and the um, the oils um, separated out in them, so you have to give them a bit of a mix before you can um, do anything with it. I'm actually not sure what I've got the green one for. I bought a load of these um, years ago, browns, blacks, some oranges and things like that because I was uh, repairing a Bakelite radio case that had some, um, it had actually had a piece missing out of the front of it and I moulded out of epoxy a new part to fit it and I had to paint it up to um, match, that's why I've got um, a load of these modelling paints. But um, I'm not sure why I've got a green one. You know, like I said, it's not the right colour green, but anything's better than um, nothing. I'm sure it's better than um, the bit of solder that I um, put on last time showing through, which is what basically what's showing through at the moment. Right. Oh, very well, I've got uh, my paint mixed up. Well, I've now got a capacitor with um, painty, uh, painty legs on it. I'll clean that off with a bit of scrap paper. There we go, that's better. 
Right, so let's have a go at perhaps just touching some of this, um, touching some of this damage in. I'll get a bit of a uh, paint. It's not very thick, that. Perhaps it'll do. Oh, it's all separated into the bottom of the um, thing. That's why. In fact, that's a better colour. I have to mix this paint up a little bit more. It's um, it really has all um, mixed, like gone to the bottom of the pot, and um, oh, it's coming back to life now. That's better. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to use very much of it anyway. I literally just want to um, touch in them bits of um, the solder mass, which are. Oh manky, that's better. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get the excess off my um, brush now. Yeah, capacitor legs are not the best things for stirring paint. They're a bit thin. <laughs> that's Jay's top tip for the day. Right, let's try this now. There we go. And all I want to do, because it's not the right colour, but it's better than um, it's better than the bare traces. I'm just going to try not going over the um, silt screen either. I just want to cover in where the where the solder mask is um, actually missing, like around here. So that wasn't due to the um, slip of the blade, that was due to me um, being a little bit over, um, over exuberant trying to clean up, clean up bits of solder with the um, solder braid and I rubbed a bit hard and actually rubbed some of the um, solder mask off. It's not going to be perfect but it's going to be a little bit better and at least it's protecting the tracks and these ones don't honestly do anything anymore because we're going to bridge them on the back but there we go yeah I've gone a bit on the um, silk screen there but I'm trying to do my do my best. My mother has definitely had the artistic bent in the family. It's not anything that I'm very. Um, I'm not artistic like this. My paintbrushes are for, for painting houses and cars and things. With they're not for. Uh, <laughs> they're not for um, doodling on wall, doodling on boards with her, um, but. If you can do that kind of thing, you can do that kind of thing. There we go. Um, at least that's a little bit better than it um, than it was. I will have to let that dry for uh, 20 minutes or so now before we actually um, work on it again. But I'll just um, what can I do? I'll just shut you off and I'll just reposition the camera so you can have a quick um, look at what we've just done there. Right, hopefully you can see that. Hopefully that's in focus. I'm not 100% sure that's in really, really sharp focus. Let me just try and uh, see if I can get the get the camera to focus on that, and then I think that's the best um, the best I'm going to get. Anyway, you can see basically what I've done. I've just used a tiny little bit of that um, umbral paint just to touch in where I damaged the um, solder mask. When the chips are on there, it will look a lot better, you know. I think it's going to look a lot better than the um, three bodge wires that I had soldered on this side of the board anyway. I, I was Even after I'd done that and I was pretty sure that I'd repaired the three brakes, I, I must admit I wasn't happy. I was mad and annoyed that I'd slipped with the thing and um, gone through the chip and damaged the board in the first place. I was absolutely hopping mad. Especially considering I'd just got some other chips and, you know, I'd had success with other chips, um, and I would have thought I was winning with this board, and like I said, they just slipped like that and, and damaged them um, traces. I was a bit annoyed, to put, it, put it mildly, but anyway, 
I think we've got a decent enough save there. So, um, well, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to let, let this dry for um, half an hour or so. Just let that um, dry off, and then we can um, stick two new um, sockets in there, and we can stick. Um, I think I've got some nice turn pin, um, 28 pin sockets. Um, if not, I've definitely got some nice dual wipe um, 28 pin sockets. So we can put um, a better quality, decent socket in there. And at least we've eliminated any issues that we could be having where it was um, just a bad contact with a bad um, socket that was causing our, um, our re-dry issues that we're having. Anyway, so I will be back, um, well, instantly for you, for me, in about half an hour when that's uh, gone off a bit and we can start sticking them on there. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, it's been about half an hour or so and this is, um, yeah, it's, um, it's dry now. At least it's touch dry, so we should be okay to um, install the sockets. And I've got two, um, I've got two lovely turn pin sockets to go in um, for IC um, 71 and 72 unfortunately I couldn't find any 28 pin turn pin um, sockets but what I did find was I found a um, 32 pin um, turn pin socket that had one of the end pins broken off on it so what I've done is basically I just um, snipped off four pins including the broken one and just um, got my file and just filed it down so it's nice and flat on that side and um, yeah it's not perfect but we put it that way around it's certainly better than the old single wipe um, socket was in there we know we're still going to get a really good connection with that so uh, that's going to go in so I think we'll start off with putting that one in so we we'll stick that down into the board There we go, that fit nicely. Let's make sure that's flat on the board. We'll spin the board over. And what we want to do is I just want to support that um, that, that little hump, that little umbral um, pot will be perfect. What I'm going to do is just slip that underneath the IC. So when I drop it down like that, it's resting. And all that's doing is just keeping all the pins fully through the, um, let me just pull you up a little bit so you can see. All I've done is put that little umbral part underneath um, the board, underneath the IC socket. And it's literally just lifting the, um, lifting the board slightly and keeping all them pins fully pushed through. You could, other way you can do it is to hold it with one finger, get a bit of solder on your solder now and then just dab a couple of pins. Um, then add a little bit more solder to them and then just heat them up and just um, basically make sure that the chip's nice and level and nice and flat in the board. Um, I just sometimes prefer doing it this way. I'll do whichever is um, easier for that particular IC to be, um, to be fair. Oops, and then we move it. No, that'll be alright like that. There's, no, it's still, um, it's still fine that. I'm going to use my Antex... Um, I think it's an 18 watt um, little Antex for this because it's only because it's got a really nice fine point and um, it's nice for um, doing these. There we go, that's the first one. The only thing is, it's only a because it's such a fine point, it does take a little bit of time for the solder to melt flow properly Oops. Ooh, I think we've got something on there that's not flowing very well just try tinning that up again there we go I wonder if there's a big ground plane on the other side of that, it's taking quite a bit of time, oh, it's gone now, it's taking quite a bit of time for the, um, for the heat to penetrate. Add a little bit more to that. Now I might actually go up to my bigger iron. 
I might actually go up to my bigger iron. I, this is struggling a little bit on um, some of these. You'd think, you know, it's, it, with an 18 watt iron with a tiny little um, bit on it like that, you'd have no problem at all, but, and you know, it melts the solder nice and easy. But some of these, it does seem to be struggling. Let's try another one. Let's try that one there. It does seem to be struggling just a little bit. It's done that one okay. If you take your time, it does, but no, I think I'm going to swap over to my, um, I think I'm going to swap over to my other iron, purely because it gives a bit more heat through, um, that is, that is really, really struggling, let's plug in the other iron, where's the plug for it, where just been using it, where's the plug gone for that one? There it is. You shouldn't miss that plug, it's a big heavy bake light thing. There we go. So we'll just give that a um, we'll give that a second to warm up, it shouldn't take long. And we'll continue on um, installing that socket. So then we'll move. I think we will have to use the little iron when we put them bodge wires on. I don't think we've got much chance of um, doing it otherwise. In fact, I will. Um, I'll just pause the video while we just wait for that iron to um, warm up because no point you waiting for that to um, go up. So I'll be back in a sec. Uh, okay, ever so slight cock up there. I <laughs> um, I forgot to press record again when I started um, when I uh, started working again. So unfortunately, I have actually um, soldered all these in place and uh, done the uh, link wires. I'll show you the work anyway. So the apologies about that, um, senior moment and all that. But anyway, I'll zoom you back down a bit, so you can have a look at the, um, the repair work. So that's the, um, there you can see, we've got our new nice turn pin um, socket for the um, ROM. And we've got our two new turn pin sockets there for the 27400 series bits of logic. And obviously, if you can just make out down there, and um, down there you can see the little bit of, can you actually make that out? Let me see if I can move the board so you can perhaps see it. I don't know if you can uh, make out down there, you can just see where I've repainted um, the scratched um, solder mask. We'll flip the board over. I've given it a clean, but, um, whoops, there we go. As you can see there, the three, the three bodge wires and they're quite neat, I'm quite pleased with that, like I said it's not, um, it doesn't look horrendous that I think it looks a little, I know it's it's more visible you know, if you handle the board than what I'd done before with them three little bits of wire but I still think, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, that's better I'm, I'm glad I redid it and I did it that way rather than um, with them three little bits that I'd done underneath the um, IC socket, that's a I consider that a better repair. I mean, it's yeah, it's visible, but um, I still consider that to be a, a much better repair to the board. So, <coughs> I suppose all we can really do now is um, give it a try and um, see if that's made any um, see if that's made any difference. We'll um, we'll get it connected up to a. Um, I we'll have to move a few bits of um, a few things off the desk, but then we'll get it connected up to a uh, BBC power supply in the monitor, and we'll just see if we've made any improvements, and we'll get the older uh, we'll get a logic probe on it, see if we've got any activity on that pin, and then I think we'll have to just um, take it from there. We'll probably leave it for this video from there because it's already getting ridiculously long. This isn't it. Right, so what do I need? I need them two um, 7400 series that I took out from there. So we've got here. Yeah, there they are. There's the two. Um, there's our 7400 series um, ICs to go back in. So the. Um, LS245, I think, yeah, that's the LS245 there, isn't it? So 
little slot and these are new so there shouldn't be a problem so I think in the next video though I will be um, you can't quite see that can you slightly out of shot there we go that's better um, I think in the next video we will be digging out um, my tester and just going through and actually testing testing all these to be fair that is a um, 244 that's actually a used one but I'm guessing it's alright not a new one I don't do it No, two, four, five. Um, right, so those are in. Then it's a case of putting in our um, mushroom, which is that one. That goes into the new turn pin socket. And I'll stick the basic ROM back in, but so do we at least get something on screen, even if uh, that wasn't functioning. Make sure that that lines up. There we are. It's in that side. The only problem with turn pin is the pins. After you have to be a bit more accurate with um, how straight your pins are. You can get away with a bit more undulation on, on a standard socket than you can on a turn pin. But for actual contact and what have you, a turn pin is far, far, far better. That's. Yeah, oh that's a really nice tight tight fit in that socket, it proper punched pushed and clicked home that. It's a much better uh, much better fit in the socket than that old um, single white point white ones like these. I will probably end up swapping these out with a better um, a better socket as well. But for now the one that we need to make definitely make contact to get the computer up and running is a new socket so there mightn't have been anything wrong with the old one but in fact I've got the old one here but it does look fairly manky on the bottom to be honest it's not in the best of conditions right let's uh, let's get the power supply I'll take it off there put it on the like that, and get the power supply out. Now, where is there a BBC power supply? Where has it gone? Considering how small this room is, it's amazing how easy it is to lose stuff in here. Where the sudden hell have I put that? So you just have to bear with me for a second. Oh, for God's sake, it's on my ta it's on my desk. Just got my meter on top of it. Let's put that out of harm's way. Right there, out of harm's way. Let's. Uh, Let's get the power supply in. We can get the power supply connected up. So that's the power supply. Okay, let's get some video connected to it. It's got video connected to it. We're better connect these. Although you don't actually need them connected, I've proved that on the other one. You don't need them connected to actually uh, operate the computer, especially not with when you don't have like the Ethernet and the disk drive and everything um, controllers in there. And it gives a really convenient place to connect a logic probe. Still have my logic probe sat on the other one. In fact, let me um, zoom you out a bit so we can. Oops. One day I will 
do some of these videos and not zoom in the wrong um, the wrong bloody way. But let's get you on the screen. So I'm very doubtful it's going to fire up or anything, but we can at least see if we get any more any more activity. We'll connect that up to the um, power supply. Like that, that on there, black to black, red to red. There we go. That's the uh, we've got the logic probe connected up just so I can do a little bit of probing. Right, um, I could do plug in the um, BBC power supply in actually, that'd help. Don't need the iron in anymore. We'll plug the beam in. There it is. That's the bead plugged in. Switch the monitor on. Give me a prop. Right, that's the monitor plug switched on. Let's switch the computer on. No, it's just the same. Try one more time. In fact, let's monitor that pin. We'll just see what we've got coming on the, the read-write pins. See if there's any difference at all. Nope. You're not seeing anything there. Oh. I think I might be on the wrong wrong channel there, but if we look on the um, if we look on the logic probe, I'm on the, the read write pin there, and it's exactly the same. We're getting exactly the same. Um, oh, no, it was on the right screen. I don't know why that didn't figure up now. It does now, but exactly as we had it before. So I think we're pretty confident we've got a good contact now between that and the CPU. Um, I suppose the next thing to do is really to pin everything. I'll um, check all the data and address lines straight through onto that chip from the um, 6502 and just make sure, absolutely sure, everything that should be getting from there to there is doing. But we've gone over that damage again and made sure it was absolutely right. And I couldn't find any more than them three breaks in it. We've repaired them in a better way. We put a decent, really good socket there for the uh, MOS ROM there. Uh, the basic ROM's still in a crappy socket, but um, to be fair, when I um, connected across, let's, in fact, let's have a quick uh, look now. I mean, if we've got continuous, in fact, this video's too long. We'll do it in the next video. But what I, you know, what I'll do is I'll go between um, all the data and address lines off the six five zero two, and um, I'll check it between both ICs there. Just make sure we've got all the lines that we need to get from there to there actually there but I don't think that's the problem I do think we have still got another problem something is either well um, I was set thinking that was being pulled high as where uh, I've been pointed out that it's um, is it a read and it's high when it's reading and obviously it's not reading anything into it uh, but why I'm not sure um, I think we're going to have to take it from um, take it from there. This video is already going to be ridiculously, ridiculously long, um, but at least it's shown how um, how I've tidied that little um, area up there and done a better job than um, I did the first time round. And we have got some decent sockets in there now, rather than ones I've made up out of um, other parts of a socket. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said I hope you enjoyed this other uh, little um, update on. Um, this BBC project so uh, thanks for watching and goodbye